As must have heard before on this channel, the ICC is considering issuing an arrest warrant for Israel's Netanyahu. However, the International Criminal Court, ICC, has recently faced significant backlash from Israel, the United States, Germany, and Canada following its announcement of seeking arrest warrants for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his Defense Minister Yov Gallant, and Hamas leaders, citing war crimes and crimes against humanity. Former ICC prosecutor Luis Marino Ocampo criticized the reactions as disappointing, emphasizing that attacking the court's decision rather than addressing the crimes themselves is a huge mistake. On May 20, ICC prosecutor Karen Khan revealed that he had requested arrest warrants for Netanyahu, Gallant, and three Hamas leaders, including Yahya Sinwar, the chief of Hamas in Gaza. U.S. President Joe Biden denounced the move as outrageous, asserting there was no equivalence between Israel and Hamas. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this briefing, please kindly support this channel by liking and clicking on the subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help YouTube learn of your preferences and enable you receive new video updates every time they are uploaded on this channel. Thank you. Let's get going. Marino Ocampo, who was the ICC's first chief prosecutor from 2003 to 2012, rejected the idea of equivalence. Khan's approach delineates that the crimes committed by Hamas leaders differ fundamentally from the allegations against Netanyahu and Gallant. According to Marino Ocampo, he defended Khan's decision to seek arrests for both Israeli and Hamas leaders, questioning the likely reaction if only one side had been targeted. Addressing the U.S. threat to impose sanctions on the ICC in response to the warrants, Marino Ocampo labeled this approach as completely wrong. Khan's decision to seek arrest warrants for Netanyahu and Gallant, along with senior Hamas officials, represents a bold move that challenges critics accusing him of ignoring Western-backed crimes against humanity, potentially putting him at odds with the Biden administration. If IC judges approve the warrants, 124 countries, including all European Union members, would be obligated to arrest Netanyahu and Gallant on site. This marks the first instance in the ICC's history where a sitting Western-backed leader is targeted in such a manner. Neither Israel nor the U.S. are ICC signatories, Yet the U.S. has previously supported the court's actions, such as the arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin. Lutz Ode, a professor of international human rights law at SOAS, noted the ICC has often faced accusations of disproportionately targeting the West's adversaries while failing to hold all war criminals accountable equally. He pointed out that the court's legitimacy has been questioned due to its historical focus on African countries, which carried colonial implications, and its perceived role as a tool of Western hegemony allowing impunity for crimes by nationals of powerful Western states. Khan, a British barrister and King's counsel with extensive experience in international criminal and human rights law, was elected as the ICC's chief prosecutor in February 2021. He has a diverse background, having worked on both prosecution and defense in various international tribunals, and has represented victims, including in the trial of Khmer Rouge prison chief Kang Gok Eve in Cambodia. Khan's early tenure as ICC chief prosecutor has been contentious. Shortly after his election, he announced a deprioritization of investigations into alleged U.S. crimes in Afghanistan, opting to focus on atrocities attributed to the Taliban and Islamic State group. Critics accuse him of not advancing investigations in the Palestinian territories, a charge seemingly reinforced by the swift issuance of an arrest warrant for Putin over Russia's invasion of Ukraine. What highlighted the long-standing demand for the ICC to take action against powerful Western states, including Israel? By requesting arrest warrants for both Israeli and Hamas officials, Khan has addressed these accusations, though this decision has also provoked new criticisms, particularly from senior U.S. Republicans who threatened sanctions against ICC officials. This echoes actions by the Trump administration in 2020, which imposed sanctions on ICC staff over an investigation into U.S. war crimes in Afghanistan. Any new U.S. sanctions would likely aim to curb the ICC's independence, potentially influencing future decisions on arrest warrants. The court's legitimacy is at stake, with a need to demonstrate true independence and international fairness in its operations. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.